It's not that we care that the Yetzirah has seven names or 7,000 names. It's rather that we understand that the Yetzirah never sleeps. I wish we worked as hard as the Yetzirah. He's going to come to you on Shabbat. He's going to come to you on Yom Kippur. He's going to come to you when you're, when you're awake in the morning and trying to go to Tefillat Nitz. He's going to come to you when you are, uh, you know, learning. He's going to come to you everywhere. You have to prepare. If you don't prepare, you're going to fail miserably. How? When he brings you something that's forbidden, you'll accept it without any questions. But when the rabbi tells you, listen, you have to do ABC because that's what Hashem says. You say, can you show me a proof, rabbi? Can you show me where it says? You said that you have to stand for Shalom Aleichem. Can you show me what book it says it in? You said that you have to eat this and this. Can you show me where it says it? You can ask questions. Now one time, Rabbi is not going to have an answer. Why? He's not available. But since you need the answer, you're going to say, ah, it's no answer. He probably doesn't have an answer. He's probably hiding from me. He thinks I'm going to forget. Probably I got him. Got him! Stomped him! <laughs> 50 bucks. Doesn't think that it's Friday, 20 minutes before Shabbat, and the rabbi has kids and a family and a life. Other than his questions. He doesn't think that. Got him! See? I can play basketball on Shabbat with my scooter. So, what happens? Makes sense. That's what happened. You see, Rabotai Yekarim, the Meraglim, They saw the good that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave them. It wasn't enough. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave Moshe Rabbeinu the promise that he's given him Eretz Yisrael, what did he say? This is the land of milk and honey. How do I know? I made it. It wasn't a sin for the Miraglim. To go to Eretz Yisrael and report what they saw. There's nothing wrong with that. They saw this giant stitch. True. There's the descendants of the Nephilim. Each person was uh, 200 feet tall. Yeah, it's pretty scary. It's true what they saw. The grapes, four people had to, had to carry them. Amazing. It's true what they said. The sin wasn't them saying what they said. The sin was going there in the first place and not just taking Hashem's word. The fact that they had a question is not a sin. You have a question for the rabbi, it's not a sin to have a question for the rabbi. Allowed. Allowed. What's a sin? The sin is when the rabbi gives you an answer and you don't like it, you say, I don't accept this answer. And you go against. That's the sin. And that's why it says in the Torah, the ground opened up and swallowed them and went to Sheolah, which is one of the names for Geinom. Why? You saw the truth, you saw the words of Hashem. You saw the blessings of Hashem. You still ask questions. We provided you answer. It's still not good enough. You deserve gain no. So why did Rachav get Gan Eden then? Why did Rachav get Gan Eden? What she do? See, Rachav told Yeshua Ben Nun the story of what happened after they got married. What happened? He says, Yeshua, I saw, the, I saw the people you sent. I don't know them personally. I don't know their families. But I heard about your God. And I heard that He's the God of everything in this world and everything in the upper world. Akadosh Baruch who heard this conversation. And he says, Rachav, Rachav, you already believe that I'm the God of the world you're in that you saw, I guess, parts of how the world got scared, but you also believed 
that I'm the God of the upper worlds, which you never saw. You believe without seeing, you had emunat tmima, blind faith in me, on my name. Hashem promised, you will have a grandson that will see what goes on in heaven. Our grandson, Yechizkel Navi. Yechizkel Navi, the same one that flew up in the air to Chiram Rasha and told him, Becha, nistakalti ubarati nekavim nekavim. I looked at you and I saw, and that's why I created the man with all of these holes and tubes in his body. Why? Because the same generation that had Yeshua ben Nun Mary Rechav that had blind faith in Hashem because she had no arrogance, no questions. I accept this is what it says, this is what it says. Whether I see you or I don't see, whether you prove it to me or don't prove it to me. Rabbi says, I do. That same generation had Korach Ve'adato, had the, uh, the uh, Miraglim who wanted proofs nonstop. Why? Their ego said, no, no, unless you prove it to me, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, but I proved it to you 500 other times. Yeah, but the next one, maybe I got you. So what are you going to do when I got you? What are you going to do when I got you? What? So if you, if you, let's say one day you're right. Does that mean the first 500 are wrong? Because that's what happens. That's why a Kadosh Baruch Hu gave us Rabotai a Torah that says to us that not everything is black and white. Not everything is black and white. Sometimes right and left are the right decision. Sometimes black and white is the right decision. Sometimes neither. Sometimes Bet Shammai and Bet Hillel are right. Sometimes it's just Bet Hillel. Sometimes it's just Bet Shammai. Sometimes it's neither one. It's some other rab you never heard of. But he has that Torah. Sometimes, Rabotai, the Chidush doesn't exist until you come to the world. And that's why the Ramban writes... There are certain things that he says, I wrote, but don't look at what I wrote as this is the opinion of the Rav and take it at face value. No. There are some things that you have to analyze by using logic. Because you know inherently that the black and white is not, fit, not a fit. For that, you go to the Rav. For that, you go to a Talmud Chacham that can analyze the situation with no bias. Because the second you have a bias, that Torah goes in the garbage. Korach had a bias. What was his bias? He wanted to be the leader. The followers of Korach had a bias. Why? They thought that if he's the leader, they'll be right under him. And maybe they'll be the leader. Because the Socha Chamim. Inherently, their conclusion was biased. Not going to get to the Emet. The Meraglim, also biased. What was their bias? Their bias is that they thought that once they go to Eretz Yisrael, they're all going to lose their job. So how can we report that Eretz Yisrael is a good place? Because it being a good place is going to make us lose our job. We're going to get fired. So we're going to tell them everything we saw. Even though Hashem promised us, and we know He promised us, it's going to be okay. Rachav didn't have any bias. What did Rachav say? Rachav says, listen, I'm putting my life on a line for something I didn't see. I just heard about it. I heard about it, and that's enough. That's enough proof once and for all. I don't need a proof for every little thing. I don't need to see every little thing. Because if I do need to see and require to see every little thing, then it's no longer emunah and Hashem. It's investigation. 
And at some point Hashem says, you know what, I don't want to show it to you. Then what? What am I going to do then? And the problem is, Rabotai, is that when we ask questions, we have to know we're allowed to ask questions. But we also have to know that not everything is always going to have a clear answer that you agree with. You have to know that your entire Avodat Hashem has to be based on pure blind faith in Hashem. It's emet because it is. That's it. The fact that Hashem gives you a, a lot of other proofs and so on, that's all great. But if you're only going to base your Avodat Hashem on things you see, at some point it's all going to collapse to nothing. Thank you.